OnlyFans can get in because they have a huge audience. and Obviously, it's their audience. I can't do some of those things. They could have. And, and it's just, it's, ins- it's insulting in a way that what they looked at doing was, and I have heard this and I can't confirm this. It's just, I don't know their books. But one can assume that they are either paying some of these uh, celebrities or some of these people who come on to come on to OnlyFans or giving them some sort of stipend for that. I know they did grants. Again, they did grants that they gave to musicians to come on to OnlyFans. I don't know how all of that worked, but I guarantee some of those people somehow got some sort of money uh, for coming on to the site. Because again, OnlyFans has no expense. <laughs> there no, There's really no expense for them um, other than keeping the site up, okay? And then, you know, number 10, they gave people next to no notice of the adult ban when they had, when you, you know they had it planned out for a while. I mean, they couldn't have just dropped this. And it was interesting they came out with their app like two days beforehand or a day before they, it wasn't actually they came out with it. They just started promoting it. They did this big publicity stint it was weird like the app has existed for a couple months and they just all of a sudden did this huge publicity that pull and where basically you're getting articles about it from every single news organization two days before this so uh, either they did know about it and they were trying to cover that up i have no idea but they had to have known about it they knew about it at least as long as bloomberg knew about it so one could assume that they knew about it at least on Wednesday uh, and not on Thursday. But you, you know they knew about it for a while. They gave people no notice. And it's just ridiculously insulting. All right. And then 11, they betrayed their buyers who bought six-month to one-year subs who thought they were buying adult content. This one, I don't know how they're going to figure that one out. You can buy six-month to a year subscriptions on OnlyFans. What were they buying? So if someone was buying this content that they assumed, then they're going to need to get their money back. Where's that money going to come from? Is it going to come from creators? Is it going to come from only fans? Who knows? But they also kind of mess in with their buyers as well. And then number 12, they blamed the banks. <laughs> the banks were doing it. It has to be the financial institutions. When it was their continued neglect, negligence, I feel that caused all of it, all of it all along with along with the greed. So as I mentioned, when you try to become more legitimate, that's going to come with more scrutiny. If from the very beginning you weren't doing everything you needed to do and we we've talked I've I've never talked on the podcast, but everyone knows that they've also had tax issues. From the very beginning, you do things right or it catches up to you. And with only fans, what have they done right? I'm not sure, but it was eventually going to catch up with them. You know, you just keep painting over it and painting over it until it just breaks. Well, I think it broke. And their scapegoat here is the banks. And I feel like the banks want money. That's what banks are for. So if they can regulate, and and there's nothing illegal about adult content. There is illegal adult content, but there's legal adult content. And that's what OnlyFans was allowing on their site. So again, the banks want money. Everyone wants money. OnlyFans just doesn't want to do, in my opinion, what they need to do to keep the adult creators on the platform. And then 13, they never appreciated the billions in free advertising and never used it to update the quality of a very janky, slow site um, I mean, every, anyone who's used OnlyFans knows from the creator end to just logging in, it was not top-notch. It was not a site that you would say, oh, you know, I need to go ahead and use OnlyFans because it's got the latest in technology. It was janky. It was just spin sometimes when you were trying to post the most basic thing. I remember trying to create like a, like for the highlight you know, area where I just wanted to put an emoji sticker on one of my one of my stories, and it broke every single time I tried to put the emoji sticker. I said, "Never mind, I don't need to put an emoji sticker on here." Like, I mean, it was just amazing how janky it was almost at every step of the way. 
yet they were taking in all this money, but they did not use that money. Again, who is using my site? Oh, okay, it's adult content creators. How can we make the site better for you adult content creators? There's a question that was never asked and never was going to be asked. It might be asked now when everyone leaves, but it wasn't asked then, and I don't feel that they spent the, the money that they took in, the 20%, on improving the site. I feel like a lot of it, again, was going out to try to become something that they weren't. So also, they didn't appreciate all the free advertising. When you basically get something very easy, it becomes easy to think that you are the reason for it. As they, that expression says, when you're born on third base and you think you hit a home run, you know, that's what was going on. They hit the right timing with the right market, and they got all that free advertising again from people bringing in. Uh, when they needed to cut them off, they cut them off on the referral program. The referral program said it was going to be for life. And then it turned out they said, oh, no, it's just going to be a year now. Everyone remembers that. That's part of it. You know, the they basically cut off the income of a lot of creators who brought in people onto the website. And people said, oh, OK, we're going to forgive that. But at every single step, it was about them and not appreciating basically what they had. Okay, so many people also have mentioned that there's a group, like a lobbying group, you know, called Exodus Cry, uh, which has lobbied to end all adult material everywhere. So, and people will say, oh, okay, well, they could have fought this Exodus Cry company. Certainly conservative lobbying groups exist everywhere, you know, OnlyFans, obviously, again, never used any of their money to counter lobby, which is what you would need to do. But obviously, the adult industry is a lot bigger than OnlyFans uh, and the uh, adult content that they had on the site and you all were posting on the site is legal. So they just need to abide by safety regulations and they would be fine. OK, no one has outlawed adult material online. It's everywhere. It's on Google. It's all over the place. So and no one no this Exodus cry group or anyone else is going to end up being able to lobby to take it away. So it's not just a lobbying group that possibly did this, that lobbied MasterCard. People wanted protections to make sure that people who were in videos and pictures wanted to be in those pictures and videos. The same as revenge porn laws. These are not necessarily bad things. They are here. They are there to protect people, to protect vulnerable people. And anyone who was on OnlyFans would have been happy to fill out a form further proving that they were over 18 and wanted to be in the pictures and videos they were in. All right. So, as I mentioned, we're going to talk about hope. There is hope due to the community. Okay, so by OnlyFans basically never embracing or helping the hundreds of thousands of creators, they all created their own ecosystem. And thank goodness they did, because that ecosystem has zero loyalty to OnlyFans. Because OnlyFans had zero loyalty to them. You know, so OnlyFans created it, so the community now exists, and the community now has power. So as a collective group, and sometimes alone, creators are demanding and getting deals. You know, they are able to get these, these from competitor sites. OnlyFans lucked out, because when they started, there was no community. This didn't exist. So they were able to determine the terms. They were able to set the terms. There would be no contract negotiations. There would be no people going, well, these people will give me 80, and these people will give me 5, and these people will give me 75, and these other people will give me better referrals for my fans. Didn't exist. Now it does. So, you know, there has, you know, if, if basically the next company that exists doesn't embrace the community, they are likely to lose the community and they will fail. OnlyFans is now realizing the power of that community and they're pathetic. Pardon my French. <laughs> I want to say worse words than pathetic. Tweet, um, pandering tweet, basically saying, oh, we're so sorry that we're about to lose all our money. 
And that's basically what that tweet was about. Please come back. Um, you know, I'm sorry that I abused you for so long. Please come back. Um, that basically isn't going to fly. So that's what's going on. There is absolutely hope because people have come together. People have found themselves or found each other. They found through podcasts like this how to market themselves, how to promote themselves. They know they can do it themselves. And they know they can find other people who are also creating content and being successful and packing together. And when they do that, they are going to be able to succeed. So if you've been listening to this podcast and you've gotten a lot from it, I've always made sure that 99% of everything I'm talking about is applicable to any content creating site, to any place you want to go and succeed. Remember, mainly what I've been talking about is building up your core following so that you can succeed. Only fans needs you more than you need only fans. And that's something to think about. All right, so if you're asking about what the future of the podcast is, I plan to continue this podcast. If OnlyFans does not shape up, I will simply just rename the podcast, but I will focus on what is best for content creators and helping all of you succeed. That's the mission. OnlyFans was and maybe still could be the absolute best place for you to promote. And for a lot of creators who are not necessarily in this uh, genre, you still can succeed on OnlyFans. So, you know, that's what I will have to say, that we will definitely continue the podcast, or I will definitely continue it, and I will continue my mission of teaching everyone marketing, branding, and promotion and success online. So, you have to see next week, and I'm so sorry that we didn't get to do the episode on Twitch, and a shout out to Aurora Star, who spent so much time with me and helped me develop that particular podcast uh, and blog, and hopefully I'll be able to do that in the future. Obviously, with so much going on, I can't really tell you what the next episode's going to be, uh, but it will definitely be something about growing and making yourself you know, stronger with your uh, marketing efforts. So, as of now, you can continue to find this podcast on Instagram at OnlyFans Secrets a Podcast. Um, as far as the Reddit group, I mean, people are moving along. People are already moving to different areas, to different websites. So we'll have to see how that goes. Definitely do plan to keep the Instagram. Uh, and you can still find me on OnlyFans at OnlyFans.com slash OnlyFansHero, where I posted a very cool a meme that I made about OnlyFans Decision, which got the most likes I've ever gotten of anything I've put on OnlyFans. <laughs> so I really appreciate everyone who liked that meme. Um, so feel free to follow if you're still going to be on OnlyFans. Follow and subscribe on OnlyFans for free at OnlyFans Hero, And we are going to continue to be on Twitter with the promotions. We've expanded, we're spanning out the promotions to a couple different sites now so that we can serve the community better. Uh, but you can still find me at OnlyFans Hero and you can find all of those other promotion sites. Um, right now, we started with Fansly and with Pocket Stars, and we will be moving on uh, to other promos if those platforms become more popular and people are ask for them. They say, hey, create another promo and create one for uh, this particular site because, you know, the promo was built for the creator and I should be able to continue to promote both OnlyFans and a lot of other sites just wherever everyone goes. And as I said, I really do hope that OnlyFans shapes up. I hope that OnlyFans becomes the company that we all wish it could be, but it, we're not going to wait around for that to happen. And as always, I just really appreciate everyone who listens to this podcast. Please continue to do so. And please, if this is your first time listening, please subscribe. I'll definitely have another episode for you next week. And I appreciate everyone who listens. And I will see you on the next episode of the OnlyFans Secrets podcast.